we're doing well. Okay, great. So we will do our usual roundtable check, and also you will uh, let us know if you have if you're facing any blockers, and if you're and having any uh, trouble or like um, uh, with finding like the data sets uh, that Tudor is explained yesterday. So yeah, we will just uh, move on. So, so, maybe just I will take over like oh, the okay. uh, the this today's stand up so oh. that um, I think we need to f share some information as well as also just get where um, where people are. So let me just take over. Okay. So I, th I think, yeah, it's like whatever, uh, what is already said, you can update your status if you, if you have. Um, and, but at the same time, I wanna know, I, I wanna just communicate some information. Like I still, you, ha you don't have GPU access, um, unfortunately. On the same machine, I cannot attach because of it's an AMD um, the machine type, and uh, in Amazon they don't have GPU for that architecture. So I have to kill the current machine and uh, create a new machine. So in order to do that, I want all of your data to be migrated. So group by group, that you will be um, so. Basically, I'm just going to share my screen. Um, let's just do this. So do you see my screen? Yeah, OK, great. So while you are there, um, so this is group one machine, for example. So whenever you log in, you will be there. It's like so. And I want everyone to be able to go to their respective. So I created a folder. It's a common shared folder. Like it's an S3. So you can move all your files, the, the things that you want from that machine inside this folder. For example, group one. Now let's let's imagine just I have a um, like so this is uh, all the groups. So, sorry. Yeah. Make their test data. So let's just. Um, creates this one and basically i mean for it's just to make sure that you 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 are very much well aware it's a very simple operation so you have to move whatever data you have inside this folder so slash mnt 10 academy cohort b and slash g1 so this one you have to change of course so that you can distinguish there are the six groups have G1, G2, G3, G4, G5, 6, and then there's a folder data. So in, inside that, for example, you can move it. So for example, that's moved. Now, if I look at the LS, then I will be able to see that the folders, the data that I moved. Once you do that as a group, you let me know, and then I will kill your instance and give you access to a GPU, a new machine, and you log in as usual, nothing different. But then you have to then move the data from this. This one also will be available inside your machine. And then you will be able to move them from there um, to you to basically the memory. Okay. So if that is confusing for anyone, let me know. Um, and we will share just the full the the actual folder, like the name and Slack as well. And um, so it should just be, or also if you want it, it's this one. So this these are basically, you have to change G1 to G2, G3, G4, according to yours, uh, your group. And when you know, just let, let um, um, the tutors know. And also, I think we're gonna be sorry. Um, so you can create inside 
the challenge document, you can also update uh, data moved. Uh, so you there will be a checklist. So basically, you just let us know as a group, and then we will give you a GPU access. And the sooner you do it as a group, the sooner you get also access to the GPU. So is that clear? Is there anything that is not clear? And if there is any confusion, again, great. So, okay, so with that, let's, uh, Hillary. Yeah, so like, after you've made the directory. Um, Sorry? After you've made the directory and moved it to that directory, where do we, uh, what do we do after that? Do we? No, that's it, just up to, like the whole group data, as long as it's moved into that directory, it means that that's an S3 directory that is mounted. So that means once okay. you moved it, it's available. So later, after I kill the machine and, and create another instance, you will be able to have the data uh, in okay. the new machine. Yeah. Okay, Abraham. Okay, what about our uh, our softwares like Postgres? And anything. I mean, anything. I mean, so if it's a Postgres, you can dump it and move it there so that later in the new machine you can uh, then restore it. So anything you want to keep, put it there. So if it's a database, dump it. And if it's a data, move it. If it's a like some codes you still want to, I mean, if it's not in a Git already, that's a problem. But it should be in a Git. If it's not in a Git, in a Git you still can put it there. Uh, but I would recommend, of course, every code to be in a git, in git um, and you should not be assuming the machine is will be there all the time. So you should as often as possible push the code. Yeah, Hillary. Uh, yeah, so I've noticed the the instance has been offline uh, since yesterday at night. So, but it should be uh, it should be accessible now. I mean, it's not oh. from yesterday. I think it's only this morning, most likely. Or yeah, is it just? A, I think it's only this morning. I I was testing to migrate it um, to a GPU instance without changing the 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 disk, but I realized that can't be done. Okay. I'll try. Yeah, just try it. And if you have any issue in login, let me know. Okay, so. I hope that is clear. If there's not if something is not clear, then um, you will let us know. Now let's just go back. So with that being clear, let's go back. I I heard that I was not able to make it yesterday, but there was a Q and A. How are people understanding um, the end to end process? Is it clear in your head? Can you explain what are the steps, the key components in fine tuning an open source model? And what are what are the, the for example, where do you start, and how is hugging face, um, you know what you know the picture of hugging face. Where do you use it, and why do you use it, and do you understand the components of um, transformer models, and when you do fine tuning, what are the different types of fine tuning, and if you are using the parameter efficient fine tuning. Do you know what it means first? And within that, do you understand LoRa um, and other components, for example, um, quantization? Are these clear? And do you know where in that model, in the transformer, uh, the embedding, positional embedding is there and, and the other components? Um, so the attention basically modules. Do you understand that one? Now, I have mentioned many things from even what I said, did you understand what I was saying? Or was it confusing? Now, you have that means you have a space to ask and you have a space to comment. Not only ask, but if you if you want to explain or rephrase, you can. But also if you if what I said is not that clear, you can also ask from there. And, and updates your status as well, uh, where you are and how comfortable you are. Hmm. 
Yeah, one data. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning. Um, I've been, uh, I was reading on Hugging Face and everything, but uh, we did a concept yesterday on uh, uh, vector embedding. So I, I just really want to understand um, uh, where, like, uh, does, um, uh, does tokenizing happen before vector embedding or uh, does a vector embedding happen then you tokenize the, the data? Yeah. And also, uh, what's the instance of vector embedding in the, like as a part of the project, like to does it does it enable us? Does it enable in fine tuning the model? I want to yeah. understand that that aspect. Yeah, that, that's a good question. Thank you for asking, uh, because it will help others as well who either didn't focus on that part of um, the the area or who has not understood well as well. So. The tokenization happens before, right? So the first thing you do, you transform the data into something that that represents. So you, you have to basically represent your data. Normally, uh, dictionaries represent things in a, in a vocabulary. And then the relationships and databases, for example, if you just say, I am creating a book, a book is a collection of word is in the dictionary right so now you can think of the dictionary to be it's about instead of decoding so tokenization means you take a book and then you count basically you place from you you give an index for example for the dictionary from let's say an english dictionary one to fifty thousand and you basically convert the book from now being like words just in places to like vectors that means numbers right one two three four like and so the order of numbers of course like let's imagine the first page and the first sentence was probably fifty thousand three thousand so the first word would could be the index fifty thousand and the second word could be you know ten thousand the third word could be uh three right so that basically means now if i give you that number you can go back to your dictionary and look okay what is you know what is the word at fifty thousand index fifty thousand what is the word at index um you know ten thousand what is the word at index three and then by that you will reconstruct because computers know only numbers that's a very very simple way of converting by index the numbers so that's a type of tokenization right so you are converting your original data into an index a certain smart index of vocabularies okay so that means now the vocabularies instead of an english dictionary in this case is the token so that means you must always start with a dictionary or by creating a dictionary before even you start converting the text into number is that clear so that means tokenization is the very first thing you do, you convert your textual data into sets of indexes. One data, is that, is that, is that clear? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, so that's the first question. And the second question you ask is, what is the, the vectorization? I mean, can you repeat the second question? Just so that I understand fully. What's the instance of uh, vector embedding in, when it comes to fine-tuning a model? Yeah, so I think your question is, in one sense, is simpler and the other is a more complex. So the very simple sense is, if you are fine-tuning for Amharic, for example, and let's imagine you used a model um, that doesn't, that haven't seen a lot of Amharic, that's what you assume that's why you are fine-tuning now when you are using the, the the vocabulary for that that was made was very much uh you know it doesn't have that much vocabulary or in its vocabulary list it doesn't have that many amharic tokens so because it doesn't have amharic that much amharic tokens so it cannot make whenever it creates then a vectorization even when you convert the data 
it doesn't convert it well. And if you, you know, if you check it for the tokens that are associated to, you know, if you, you can download, for example, the Lama 3 or Lama 2 tokens, right? And then you can check which tokens are actually attributed to Swahili. You would realize that 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 are not much. Not you know there aren't much tokens that are actually associated to because that the language or the model haven't seen maybe that much um, Swahili. And for Amharic it could be even much smaller because for Swahili maybe that it's an English thing and some just combination of letters could be English as well as um, as Swahili. But for Amharic, for example, which is using a different byte code or different um, uh, Unicode characters, that is even smaller. So that means you cannot use the original tokens for, you know, to fine tune. You, you must find or you must give it a new tokenizer such that it actually uses like it has much more vocabulary for or much more tokens that are available for the language that you are desired now i think you can ask let me stop there and you can ask on that because that that is the essence of it does that okay. make sense okay. yeah, yeah yeah so it, uh, if you use if you if you use a model that hasn't that doesn't have enough Amharic, you need to uh, and wasn't trained. Let's say it doesn't have, like you say, it doesn't it, it doesn't have enough Amharic tokens. You're going to have to give it new ones for it to um, learn on those ones, and then you keep fine tuning it. So I think that's the is that what you're trying to say? That, that is exactly the case, and you have to know there is. That's where, like, as I said, so the simple part is that one. The very complex part is figuring out how in the process you align. So it's called alignment. And what that really means is that the original model, if you, you have understood by now, Laura, you know, you're trying to decompose the model into the one that is the original weights that you froze, that you freeze, and you don't change. And then the new model that you are going to use. So the new, that's called the parameter efficient part, but you decompose it and you call it delta weight. So that delta weight is very small, right? So you are trading with your new tokenizer. You are actually um, training that. Now, the original model, has a different tokenizer, and your model has a different now tokenizer. How are they going? How are you going to get aligned? You know, how are you going to align? Is the complex part, and you need to understand it very well to proceed. But yeah, what we said earlier is exactly correct. You are you want to give a lot more um, vocabulary to the language that you are interested in your fine tuning. But you cannot change the tokenizer, nor you can only align because the, the tokenizers for that one is already fixed. That means the, the indexes and the vectorizers and all that is fixed in that model. Right. So how do you get a line is is the complex part of it. Does that does that give you enough clue to explore and to understand further? Yeah, yeah. I will. Uh, I would love to read more, and then I, I think it would be to become more clear figuring, as I read. Figuring out exactly, figuring yeah. out, and the I think yeah, it's the process. The process on, of yeah. uh, like the process of doing it is, uh, I think, uh, maybe what I need to figure out. Exactly. Because uh, yeah, when this we're discussing this yesterday in the group, and we're not really picking on it, understanding exactly the process, but uh, I think the explanation has helped. Exactly. So the good thing is okay. check it, you know, get the, the original tokens for that model, for example, Lama 3 or Lama 2, and check how many of them, the tokens can be attributed um, with, with the language that you have. 
even okay. just by manually you can check some things i mean of course it's a thousand fifty thousand uh, so it, it is a lot but at least you will know you know by just detecting for example for amharic by detecting if if the tokens contains unicodes that are attributed to amharic you can check which tokens are candidates for example in lama 2 for amharic and and you can compare or another way to do it is you can go in i think online you can give it amharic letters or amharic text and you ask it to give you the the kind of the token the tokenizer or the token index so in that sense you will also know which token index are associated to to the original token so you know you can you can be clever in finding out which tokens in the original Lama model are associated to the language that you are interested in. Okay, but that is a good question. Okay, so anyone else? Any updates as well as, so you can also give updates, what are clear to you and what are not clear to you. Michael. Okay, good morning, everyone. So uh, up to yesterday, my understanding was uh, because we, it doesn't have, we doesn't have much the, the model doesn't have much Amharic token, so we use the language generation label. Uh, might be necessary because, uh, like, we can use the unlabeled clean data. Then after that, we can label. We can use the label data and use it for uh, for our specific purpose. But uh, yesterday was the yesterday uh, every tasks was related to getting the label data then train it so uh, which one is the, co the correct way uh, okay so sorry like so the task is about labeling and so what is the question like when we say which what are we comparing okay so so so, so there are a lot of data from like for example in hugging face there are a lot of like seven million data and i found like one million data but they are not labeled but they are cleaned amharic data so my my, th my thought was the giving the that unlabeled data to the to the model so that so that because it, it doesn't have much amharic token so that it, it can understand the language architecture and the language but, so, but how do you do that is the question right so one part is of course you can use that one as a tokenizer and you can generate your token tokenizers so or you can use for amharic for example the gari tokens that are even trained on on more amharic texts i think on more than a billion even if they are also they came from i think they, they are translated amharic but at least so you can compare your tokenizer or you can use or you can generate a tokenizer or you can use the gari model in this case um so that part you can use unlabeled data you don't need any labeling and then the other part is how do you how do you train it how do you fine tune so by looking at the very first thing is that so the usual is the supervised so the supervised uh, fine tuning and the supervised fine tuning of course you need a label and that label could be just continuation right so the continuation is that like, you break the the text into like certain sentences and you ask it what is the next sentence right so that's one supervised so you you're kind of decomposing them into text and then you ask it like what is the next the, the next sentence following and that way you can find you there are many ways to create automatic labeling right within the within the actually the part so including by eliminating some words and it's called much more of like the you know fill the gap right what is the missing word and then the missing word it it will know so there are many ways you can create um, label data so automatically you don't have to manually label and i think what what i am recommending for this case is yes a lot more some very very simple data like the telegram and others you could use them just to 
um, to kind of prepare them in such a way that they at least generate like um, I mean if you have a clean data you can use them for it's a Q&A what is the answer for this question if you have that already that's good or you can create some a couple of I don't know a hundred or or more to just as an evaluation but for all the labeling maybe just use the automatic labeling that means by just preparing the data by you know either omitting something and asking you to fill the, the omitted word or by decomposing the text and asking it to predict the next sentence or by asking it by detecting english versus non-english saying like what is the equivalent of that so whichever way so that's the creativity of you does that make sense michael yeah so yeah. so our, our end goal can be different like so in the document it says we could we should make a ai powered customer support system but in this case yeah. like someone can make a question in this someone can make yeah. summarization yeah. or something like that exactly but that, that is the goal i don't confuse what is the goal for the company with what you can do now that's the goal of the company the business objective of the company is that one of course you are marching towards that goal but what you can create now is a lot more first test step by step you taste things if it works already that it improves a very simple generation of text then you can go on to the next level by adding more data so this is a prototype for that business objective yes and it's good that you focus on the business objective but know that it, achieving that means dividing the task into smaller steps Yeah, is that correct? Does that is that clear? Yes, thank you. Okay. And who else can update us and what your understanding, your questions, where you are struggling, where you are, where it makes sense, where you get excited. And I haven't heard from Mr. Betelheim uh, and others, many, I think females in general, uh, other than Grace and others, like I haven't heard what is happening i mean you are part of it right so yeah but go on uh who was uh yeah, japanese was that japanese or yes okay okay so um uh, my question is on the uh, pre pre-training and fine-tuning uh we tried the i tried to read about it both both pre-training and fine-tuning uh what I understand is that fine tuning comes after pre training. We we fine tune a model that is already pre trained uh, for our specific uh, goal. Yeah. Uh, and there are different steps, both in pre training, also in fine tuning. And what I understand is that tokenization uh, is on the pre training part. We we to tokenize word and also represent the word in. Um, Textual representation, and we pre-train we pre-train the model. Uh, then we fine-tune it for, uh, as previously mentioned, like for the chart or the text summarization. But so, uh, what my difficulty is that uh, if we, for example, we have uh, uh, the Gari model. So Gari model is uh, pre-trained, also I think fine-tuned on Llama two. Uh, I think because they did tokenization part, I think that is a part of pre-training. I'm not sure. Then they also the also fine tuning. So if we use Gary model, we we, we don't do pre-training, but actually fine tuning. Yes, uh, the model we don't train it, we don't uh, uh, tokenize the order and give it because that's a pre-training process, and we just fine tune it like using uh, uh, tools like transfer learning. Or, uh, I I know about a little bit about ancient learnings, so we 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 do transfer learning on that to fine tune it, or do we have to also pre-train it uh, to give it more yeah. Uh, tokens? Yeah, so I think this is again really excellent um, question, and because it really clarifies. Yes, when I talk about alignment earlier, one day I was asking, it is that alignment? 
between the pre-trained model and the fine-tuned model, right? Now, you could do some clever alignment, even if you train now on a new set of, um, on a new set of um, tokenizers, as long as there is alignment between them, that means you can represent. So you're basically, what, what it happens is that you are adding a delta weight to the final weights. Um, and of course, so th if the two, they start from a very different, they represent, you know, ultimately what you get is just a vector, right? So if they are, if they are using a very different vectors, what you are updating, like for example, let's say the, the dimension is a thousand, like, uh, or let's make it even a hundred. So you are using a hundred dimension vector as your vectorizer. And now it goes through the process both in one part on the pre-trained model that you, you have froze, the original model, and then the ones that you are fine-tuning, the parameter efficient fine-tuning part. So of course you are ultimately then summing them. So when you sum them, unless there is alignment, you're basically, uh, you know, the dimension one in the pre-trained is completely, you know, the meaning of that is completely different from the meaning of uh, the one on the fine-tuned part. So in that sense, the, the model is not aligned and you get really crap. So alignment is key. So the, easy, the usual and easy way to align is exactly like what Gary did, for example, you would do first the pre you, you do pre train that means on top of it you actually use a new tokenizer and and you do update all the weights um for that and for that you really need a lot of data and that's why gary needed a lot of data for that right and then afterwards now that you have the same tokenizer both on the pre train and now on the task that you want, we want to fine tune then you can fine tune and that fine tuning is a process is really less about, I mean, it's a, in a concept sense, it's transfer learning, right? You are transferring, but a lot, it's actually slightly different technically, because in this case, you're actually using, you're updating a weight in such a way that, that um, in the model space, it's slightly different. You are actually, making it more aware um certain things it, it just is you are not i mean there are many types of fine tuning and one part of fine tuning which is a more complex one is you cut off certain layers in the deep learning and you find you know you kind of train normally when we say um transfer learning it's in that sense in this case it's much more of you are training a new new smaller model but that can be added to the older one and so let's use it the parameter efficient learning as part of that transfer learning but what you are the original model acts as your really language expert and the new model that you're training or fine-tuning so by fine-tune means you are using uh, LoRa it is as if like you're training something new right something the smaller model is very new to be added uh, to the original model. So that part is really captures the essence. So whatever the original model, you can say uh, that you are starting from there and then you add on top of it such that your addition makes the overall model a lot more uh, better or well suited for your project. So I think what you said is correct, but it, it just maybe understanding it from from this perspective might might help. So I think, yeah, like, but in a simpler term, those decompositions, pre-train, fine-tuning is exactly um, as, as they are. And alignment is the key question between these two, because when you add, you know, two vectors, and the two vectors you assume, they represent the same thing. That means vector, you know, for example, if you are adding, um, if you are, if you want to compute the the sum of distance, you know you have two longitudes and latitudes, so a dimension, a vector of two, you know, latitude and longitude. Now, whatever you want to compute, so let's imagine you want to add one meter 
into that. So I give you one that longitude latitude, and I want to give you, I want you to add one meter into the east. Now that absolutely that understanding of that this vector has a meaning. That means it's latitude and longitude, and that the next thing you're adding on top of it. So that means the new the new one meter vector delta in this case you know your pa parameter fine tuned part the one you add must represent must know what east is what you know it, it must have the same units as the original one or same meaning otherwise when you just add on it you know it's it's a garbage right so what you call one meter could just be some completely uh, one million kilometer right because you you didn't you didn't take into account the spherical um, coordinates right so you have to understand exactly in which coordinate system it is the vector and that your delta vector is also in the same coordinate system again let me stop and let me see if that clarifies or if that confuses yeah, I think it's uh, it's a guide. So I have, now I we I, we have to figure out on how to uh, uh, pre-train more the already pre-trained model and how to align it so that it won't uh, crash uh, and also fine tune it uh, so that we could add up on top of the uh, previous model. Yeah. yeah. So in principle that. Yeah, so you need more memory and more bigger GPU for a pre-train, you know, an okay smaller GPU for fine tune. In that case, you might not be able. So I think testing within your group spend a lot more um, on fine tune than pre-train. But testing the pre-train, trying to load and find, you know, uh, give it as much and see if it really improves or not, is also something that you can assign to one person or two so that they can update you and they can demonstrate to the group what happens because you don't have that much data so i would not expect the pre-train will work okay maybe we can uh, uh i i know that we uh, uh, we can check out uh yesterday we, we were uh, discussing about sentence Piece because they that is the one I think they used uh, for Gary yeah. Uh, yeah. for organization. That's we can, for organization. Yeah. yeah, we can use the Gary one and also the sentence piece, and you can check the relation uh, or uh, and also yeah. for uh, our maybe they're doing that. Uh, I think I understand a little bit, and I will further uh, dig on it uh, by you yeah. uh, and and uh, ask a lot of questions. Exactly, I think this is this is figuring out. And also the very keyword that if someone is not paying attention to pay attention is alignment. And of course, this is complex that you have to understand many things. This is one other thing, but think of it almost always when you want to understand alignment or in this fine tune pre-train, fine tune is adding, you know, delta vector into uh, the pre-trained vector. So the pre-training is creating, locating, for example, a, like a, a, a point on the map, right? So it's a search, really searching in that huge parameter space to find the right combination of these vectors. And the fine tuning part is taking the delta part, the very small change such that within that, once you discover a bigger area, like or the area that you're interested, it's now that fine tune, you're just gonna, change it slightly to this or to that so that it does well okay so if and and that delta and the original must be aligned you know whenever you add something on top of it you, you they must be aligned so that alignment whenever you hear alignment you should think because a lot more of the issue of LLNs is alignment okay but that's good uh, Abraham uh, yes, thank you. Is there anything that you can share us on how we can uh, label around it the data and what kind of fine tuning that we should conduct? So I think it's mentioned already. 
depending on the data quality, the data that you have, you could use. So the very quick and seem dirty labeling is just to label data based on prediction, right? The next sentence. You decompose, so you can generate so many, right? Based on just the next sentence, the next sentence. That's just still, you're saying like, I want you to predict the next sentence. And here is the, the start, the data, and here's the label. By label, in this case, is the next sentence is a label, right? And another one is, so the label in this sense is a very, you know, it's not, cl in classification, you, you, you say, okay, I read a sentence and I tell you whether this is negative or positive. It's the same, in this case, you can say like, I, I have this sentence, you know, what are the, what, what is the, the most likely uh, following sentence? That's labeling, so now the data is labeled. So that's what actually is automatic labeling. And you can also do some um, very smart things like by identifying if there are digits, like using, uh, if you know how to filter digits. So you can say like, are there digits or not? And, or are, is there another language inside of this sentence or not? So I think this, I would say create a, a couple of them and see which one. So the most important part is the goal, because whenever you have, um, whenever you, you do these things, of course, if, if, the, if you are fine tuning is the same as the goal, the next goal, you know, the goal that you have in mind, then it's good. That means it's very much, it learns a lot, so it's good. So for example, the, as a, one of the goal we say to you, we give you is to predict, to generate text. Given a text, it completes to the follow-up text. So in this case, the good label data is just to ask it to predict next sentence, to ask it. And, and I think we don't have that much summarization, but if you have also title versus generating a title, it's good. So if you have so many articles, you give it an article and you say, you know, what is the, a good title? And that title basically is now a summarization process so i would say those two are like something that are depending on the data that you have you could you could try does that make sense yes it does thank you okay michael okay yesterday we, in the group there was a data a data set channel created so so that we could uh, upload uh, uh, the the labeled data set that we gather so so if if our so first anyone is not uploading so for if you have any labeled data it's a recommendation and second if if we if our purpose is different the label data for example one of the label data is summarization and the other one is q and a so if if i am if i am i want to do the summarization that does the q when they you you use uh, can it be uh, successful to, to to use it in the summarization part or so uh, i didn't understand it so do you mean on the same fine tuning you can fine tune it for for both okay but what if if, if i want for the specific task yeah. the other so fine tuning is... Yeah, so, so on that specific thing, so so the, there are multiple layers, right? So the first layer is whether it actually understands and writes Amharic that is connected to the pre-training. The second is the the updates that that means then the amount of data on the, for example, let's choose Q&A. So on the Q&A, as you train it, it also, of course, you know, you can imagine all of the fine tuning it can move it quite a lot because you have a lot of data. And so that means, for example, the a weight that was, let's imagine just 0 0.1, could be moved to either minus 0 0.5 or to 0 0.8, right? Based on when, when you do that, that, that Q&A. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure if I understand your question, but if you just Q&A, if you just train it on Q&A, that's it. But 
if you then ask it to summarize, it will still be able to do summarization, but it might not be as good, as good if you were to train it using summarization data, because it's it's the weight update that matters. Um, have I addressed your question or did I understand? Okay. So yeah, I think why are we? I mean, I haven't understood, and I I, mean, I know the case, but I haven't understood why people are not like others, especially the same. You know, all the time when I come, it's the same people that are talking. Does that mean they are the only ones who are benefiting from our training, and the others are just uh, not just there just to consume and then go or how do we understand this phenomenon i mean uh, we, we really failed to understand so maybe just by name i can name so shayla for example what's your um what's your understanding so far and what are the questions in your head Hello, if you are talking, Sheila, we can't hear. Are you talking, Sheila? Then in that case, we can't. Okay. But we are unable, at least I'm unable to hear. So maybe just you can unmute mute again. But in the meantime, okay, let me go to Jerusalem. Jerusalem, how much of it? Like, are you comfortable? Are you understanding? And, um, yeah, but can you type at least? I mean, I haven't, I mean, in a way, like, I think this is, this is okay, but you should try once in a while to go out of whether you are at work or, I mean, hopefully you're not working, but you should just go out and talk sometimes. It's not, excuses only work for a couple of times. So, um, okay, better lame. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. It's slightly faint, but we can. Okay. Uh, we have managed to gather data sets from different kinds of sources, and we have um, decided on how we're going to be creating our database. And then we were discussing about uh, uh, which kind of model we're going to be using, and we're looking at the Gary model. Um, I was having a bit of a trouble understanding how the tokenizing was working because it was giving us a lot of tokens for small letter of words in Amharic like we tried for Abdada and the synthesis model that was used in the Gari was giving us 12, I mean nine tokens so that's what I'm trying to understand now okay yeah that is good so that means it's you're getting the hang of it it's like some of the vocabularies are making sense and you have identified that's bad giving it a baba and giving you nine tokens yes i was wondering about that yeah okay yeah so i think identifying the, the yeah so that already is good because that should not happen um and yeah so that's one point to write to them as well like you know in principle so this can help them like they are saying like their tokenizer is good and you are saying that their tokenizer is, is really not good for some for certain areas maybe a baba is not that much represented and so it doesn't have but that's that shows actually a lot of problems so normally it works fine at least in the way that we taste it but good and and i think maybe just for tomorrow come up with some you know write down 
things that I have understood and things that I haven't understood. And then so that you can ask some questions on things that you haven't you haven't understood. Yeah. Okay. Good. Daraj. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we we are group six. So I think we are only just working on Swahili language, and uh, yeah, I'm trying to just understand. Uh, the way we are going to create data sets. Uh, but just a bit on, on tokenizer, so because I didn't know about the language, so I'm trying to use some pre-trained models that already support uh, this tokenizer. So for for SQL language, for example, we can we can use BERT model. So I think it is support this and uh, yeah, so then after that, so I can understand uh, about that. And uh, and also I I created data sets and I put uh, a data set on hugging the face. Uh, it is actually related to this classification task. So classification of news, uh, uh the news is related to like uh, entertainment healthy or sports other and uh, maybe our group uh they they can able to just see and uh, and the next thing is uh, pre-processing and uh so doing yeah. better on tokenizer and and also yeah as said so the the basic thing is so aligning the tokenizer. So yeah, uh, I need to just uh, do more on that. Um, and so that's all on my side. Hello. So am I back? Yes, I'm, I'm yeah, just completed. Good. Okay, sorry that I was muted. I uh, saw I was, uh, my internet um, was interrupted. So, but good, Deraji, and I think I'm, I'm recommending everyone also to push as much of your work as wedding in Hugging Face and building your Hugging Face um, profile as well by sharing models and data and um, describing them and, and maybe creating app there as well. So that's good. Okay. Shayla? Oh, hi, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yeah, we can hear you now. Um, okay. Um, so sorry about um, the silence. I haven't been available for a while. I had a medical emergency, but today is when I came back. I'm in group six with JJ, and um, the, um, we are currently working on uh, the hugging face, like merging our data set with the data set we found in hugging face. And so what I'm trying to do is understand how to work with hugging face and also um, how to pre-process the data that we have. So that's where I am. Sorry for that. Yeah, no, it's okay. So just maybe again, you know, for tomorrow, and maybe just this would also help you in the process of the for the interim submission. Identify, I think this is exactly for everyone. Please identify areas that already that is a knowledge, right? Identifying what you have understood, the, the jargon terms um that you have understood and the jargon terms you haven't understood, and the conceptual blockers and the conceptually kind of you know, in three categories, semi-understand or okay, you are now okay understanding. That means you can understand, it makes sense. And the other one is like, it kind of makes sense, but it's not. And then the other one is really just, you haven't had time to check and it's not clear. So in this three category, write as many entries as possible so that you have now every stand up 
you will be able to ask questions. And I, I mean, I am not, I'm not even overemphasizing this. The current world and the current work is a lot more about who asks the right, you know, who asks insightful questions because the answers are not anymore that hard to get. And people are much more about like people with ability to ask lots of questions. I mean, you know, you don't have you don't have to ask them, they don't have time, but you can ask, you know, the GPTs and the models that people produce. So it's about really, if you're not asking questions, if you're not synthesizing, drilling down into your thoughts and, and collect them such that you solve something through question, through some probing, like a, a detective type. I mean, I will not hire you, I, I said it before. And that's that's why it's I'm trying to really focus it and every time, whatever chance I have, I am focusing you towards that because there isn't a job um, in the old sense. It's the people who drill down on their thoughts and who can ask easily questions are going to be a lot more needed. And that's the job space. So, you know, the practice here is going to make you the practice at home and the practice on your own space uh, is what makes you really closer to the current workforce. So that's why, you know, it, it must be that you have to fight. I mean, in, in, in the, the whole training could have just been this, that you fight to ask questions, right? And not being asked to, to ask questions. So, but thanks, Sheila. Okay. Um, mister? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so uh, me and my team, uh, we are planning to uh, annotate a good uh, data set on low so that we will be able to create a chatbot that will uh, answer questions related to low. So far, we have been trying to collect some data, but most of them are uh, PDFs in the it's really difficult to scrape them because um, when we try to scrape them, the analytic characters, they are not um, scraped correctly. Uh, the characters sometimes change. Uh, also, uh, the PDFs are not very structured and uh, we are not able to find uh, a good data yet, but uh, I think we have found some kind of solution today and uh, we are more focused on that. Data annotation for now. Okay, and and how is your understanding evolving? Uh, so I was trying to read about um, what fine tuning is in general, and uh, I've been able to understand that uh, models like Llama are are more effective when they are fine tuning a smaller data field. Uh, also, I'm trying to look at um, how phase. And uh, I'll also be covering about the guarding, guarding model uh, today. So yeah, so as maybe then as before, like in the for the process of also the um, uh, the interim submission last for tomorrow stand up, synthesize which parts are getting clearer. Like the comp, you know, have a kind of a page where you write in three columns. You know, and then just write concepts or ideas and things in these three categories, where things are clearer in how they make sense, and then things that are just semi, you know, you are not that clear, but you kind of know what it could be, but you're not. And the other one is, of course, just you have heard it either in the stand up someone talks or in the blogs that you are reading or somewhere, but you have no idea what it is. And then try to sort out that one. Be strategic so that everyone is strategic. And then you tomorrow you have also a question set that you can ask, right? Um, so yeah, do that, Abu Bakr. Uh, okay. Well, thank you. Uh, so on the previous update, uh, I, I actually had. Uh, personal matters to attend to yesterday and before yesterday, but I was actually 
uh, having more understanding on LLM fine tuning, which models to choose from, how tokenization works, and how to better tokenize our work, clean our works. But currently, my uh, my thoughts are, uh, my questions would be, uh, for example. To aggregate different data, what that we scraped, for example, different teams had different data. So that means different type of columns, different number of columns. So, for example, in our case, one of our data have like nine columns, and one of our, one of the data would have two columns. So, when we try with one note, it, how do we integrate it? Like, how do we make one big data? Do we make like even one big data, or do we like how how yeah. do we go about so, it? So, so uh, you know, think again. Uh, automatic labeling. It doesn't matter. Like, it's not. This is not machine learning in the traditional sense. You have to fix this and then go and then give it the data and then it, it knows. No, it is more about like. You have a target, either it's summarization or uh, question and answer or uh, classification. And then you just prepare data around it. Now, I would say choose almost always the simplest. So if you have data more title, which has title or some summarization element, that means it has a summary or something, then use all that data for summarization tasks. And just it doesn't matter what the other columns are the dates whatever you don't care right? the other columns can have many things all you care is probably just for that okay i want the content the the more content and then the smaller content the more content is the actual data and then the, the title or the abstract whatever it is is the summarization that's it now every data that falls under that category is that one if it is if it doesn't have if it's just only one column that's just it's only content then okay use that one mostly for to create a new type of data where it says predict the next sentence you know the high and if you have another data where you have like news articles with like their uh about their topic classified that is called for classification right so that means if i give a text and i ask it whether in which category does it belong and that one is one data so it's really thinking the whole thing as one you know it's like and then say like okay for what role am i wanting and then you can actually within one pre-training or within one fine tuning you can do all um in that sense and just then after that is okay which which uh, alpaca model or which model of you know representing this fine tuning data I'm gonna use. It's just that um, part. Oh yeah, go and ask. Uh, okay, uh, maybe now it's like more clear. Uh, but one more thing. Uh, so yes, like one of the columns as you mentioned is has like classification. For example, for in our case, have like five classifications uh, based on the script data. Uh, so. But the problem is we don't have classification. For example, I found one that data source that, uh, that has like around hundred thousand rows, but our ours was twenty thousand rows. Wouldn't that affect uh, the classification part? Or just yeah, but but yeah, it's like I think that you know it is about collecting. Of course, every it's it is not. I mean. It will learn your model will learn will be good for one thing of course like if you have a classification i mean even classification it's not the type of classification that matters right at first is you have to know these two things at first is just there's a layer stack layer it's a general model the first layer is understanding the language artifacts itself because it is not doing some kind of machine learning sense it's really going through some language part right when you give it to the base model or which is called the pre-trained model the base model does on its own something and predicts some some vector and then the fine-tuned model based on what you give it predicts something and you're combining right and in that process of course is um what you are saying like it has a stack of 
First, is it its Amharic part? Has it been increased? Like, for example, if it's Amharic or Swahili, ha has its understanding of language has increased? And after that, has it increased? So every process you give it first, it also improves the language capability, right? Because it's going through this, transforming them into vectors and then looking at them and, and passing it through the transformer model. So I think forget now less about, of course, you will realize like the, the smaller data represented, for example, if classification is re represented less, it really, of course, won't classify much. But also, you're not going to ask them classify. So I think, yeah, like we have two, two interests. One is it gets it's to know how much its language capability, Amharic capability, for example, for Amharic, for those people who work in Amharic, how much of its Amharic capability has increased. So that's really already one goal, very big goal. The second part is doing exactly what you want, which is for certain classification, how much it has improved the classification. And the third part is if it's for summarization, how much it has summarized. So it's not, it's not gonna be like ML where you ask it to classify something and you ask it again, you know, within that only category. No, it should learn. You should show it many classification and it just learns how to classify things. It learns the intricate part of the language to say, you know, these are the categories. Um, and of course, in the zero shot learning sense, if you ask it which category it belongs to, of course, it will remember mostly the ones you trained. But in the non zero shot and example sense, when you have like given like for example before you were saying dog and cat now you give it as an example classify this language whether it is news or a sport you know it hasn't trained but it should be able to to know because it has trained what it means classification so it's not like machine learning in the machine learning sense it won't do that so this is language model so it, it should be it should be very clear yeah uh, okay, now now it's like super clear. So um, my next question is: Let's say that uh, we have around one hundred and fifty thousand or two hundred thousand rows, and the base model we actually figured it would work for in our case. So, like, how how do we think we should go about it? So assuming that we have the tokenization and word embedding steps there. Yeah. So then uh, uh, just choose one of the data models, you know, fine tuning data models, right? So, and just prepare your data along that. Just use the hugging face data part and then prepare it. Once you have that data prepared in that format, it's after that is just, you know, just the hugging face it shows you, I mean, their modules, their, their packages. It's very easy after that to train, right? Or just you give it and then it, it trains. And after it trains, then you validate. So that means, did, did you get as expected? Has it improved over the base model? Almost always compare it with respect to the base model that you use. Has your training improved? Again, in a number of metrics. One is, has its language capability updated? Second is, has it is the generalization updated? And then the third is, has its ability on that particular part updated? So if you validate on that, then you can say like, you, you, you are in the right track and you did well. Yeah, go on. So, sorry, can you repeat the three metrics? Uh, uh, so the, the first part is its language capability. That means it's now writing something that makes more sense than before. So over the base model. So it's really just pure language ability. So metric around uh, on, on, the, on its language capability. Third is on its generalizability capability, which means if it's classification, for example, earlier you ask it to classify zero shot, one shot, and you know, three, three, four shots. Has it is generalizability updated now if you give it in multiple forms. And third, is of course on the particular data that you trained. So select now from the validations that you withhold, you, you, you held before and test it. So, so the, the specific 
the general and the language capabilities. Okay, great. And I think I know over time, so I'm gonna stop here, but I hope it's clear that the things we are pushing you towards. It is not a new, it's a new era in part, or it's a very, very, very different era than before. And by just listening and trying doesn't work. It is, uh, it's the active mindset that really is gonna be higher because solutions are much more easier these days. But thinking the right, in the right sense, asking the right questions, um, and and decomposing things what you under what is understood from what's not understood is really a way of yeah it's like a way of success in part that's these days i am doing the same i don't write much code as much as before i write much more what should be the first sentence i should write so that github copilot can complete it better okay if github copilot cannot complete it better what should be i write um so that the chat gpt for all for example it will do it better if not can i go to now google gemini and then get this thing so and then they are i am doing that but google and facebook and others are doing the exact other things how can i even generate like the entire my websites uh, automatically all the time dynamically updated you know using a model right so and the people who are running are the ones that really can trigger this thing, can understand and break down and isolate and, and figure out what they understood, what they haven't understood, what needs to be understood. You know? So without that form of Q&A mindset and being able to really drill down on your thoughts, just because you write a code, you're not gonna make it as much. And because just the writing code is getting, everybody's working, every big company is working, trying to automate the, write, the code writing. Still, there are gonna be, we need coders, but we want more coders that ask questions and that really looks at the code and then kind of identify the problem. Maybe just, okay, that part is not generalizable. Maybe let me write it this way. So of course, you really need to understand the code and then ask question on that code, on what you see. And that's exactly the same as here I'm, I'm saying, ask questions, I'm asking you, I'm telling you something, I'm showing you something. And then you just have to drill down and then ask questions such that you make progress. And the same is on your thoughts. Your thought is the kind of code and look at it and what have you understood, what have you not understood and decompose it and write something. And that way it gets easier, right? So. It's that practice that is very, will make you very special. No matter how you do, you will be fine because you are good. We believe that you are good, right? But what makes, what sets the standard is like, okay, beyond that, beyond just being generally good, can you be special? Can you compete in the current scenario? And we believe you can if you practice some of the things. Um, so, yeah, with that, I will leave you. So, yeah, thanks everyone. Cheers, and then Academy, we can stop. Yeah, Hillary, is that a question? No, it's a concern um, okay. about uh, the WS access. Uh, I, still, I still can't access it. Uh, and I'm not which, using which it. Group is it? Which, code. which group are you? Uh, still <coughs> connection. Group four. Group four.